What if we, my brother and I, went out and found all our ingredients in the wild and then tried to cook up a MasterChef winning dish for Daniel Clifford, the two Michelin star celebrity chef on the telly? A phone call later and we had the restaurant booked, professional chef waiting and just one day to catch, yes. forage and cook in the biggest, most challenging Carl vs Alex episode yet. Oh God. If that was my food and someone else was doing that, there's a good chance I'd have probably had buttered you by now. Well, I've got proper nerves for this one. Here we go. By the end of the day, we need enough top quality ingredients to make a main course and a dessert. And a dessert? Yeah, and you're not allowed to go foraging in people's gardens. So no like going around the back and pulling up your, your carrots or your cucumbers, all right? Hmm. Anyway, good luck. Luck was exactly what we'd need, as there could only be one winner, and that would be who scored highest for flavour, presentation and creativity, according to the pro chef. Remember, we'd only be allowed to cook with ingredients we'd found in the wild, so searching out tasty food was going to be vital. It's been a long time since I beat Carl. We're gonna do it today. Hi. Pretended that I was about to drive off to some secret foraging spots because I wanted to not draw attention to the fact that there's an amazing spot for blackberries just behind our house that I don't think Alex knows about. Now we're talking. I think I need quite a few more. So I'm heading down south to the seaside because every good meal contains a piece, a lump, a chunk of protein. And that's what I'm gonna try and get this morning. There we go. Some lovely berries in there. Oh, I've just had a text. I gotta pull over. Damn it. Oh no. Guy who I'm going out, who I was gonna go out on the boat with. Apparently the forecast messed up and my boat trip has been cancelled, basically. No bass for me then. Being up here has reminded me of being a kid and looking for blackberries with my mum. However, I have found another ingredient, another interesting type of food. These are slow berries. You can make gin out of them. So what I'm thinking about doing is mixing them in with this and maybe making something Oh, what is that? Oh. She looks quite calm here. She looks decent. I guess I've just got to hope that that is enough. I've only got today and I really need to find some other ingredients and go and catch a fish. Fishing rod. Oh, what's that? There are just thousands of little flies on the front of my car. You know what, you could probably, you could probably collect them all and make a meal out of that actually. I hope it doesn't actually come to that. Whilst Alex set to work fishing off the beach, I left home in search of mushrooms. Keeping my eyes open as well as I'm driving for some kind of fruit tree. Apples, pears, plums or something. Or a banana. I'd laugh so much if I just randomly saw a... If I have actually just found an apple tree with apples on it, That'll be the first bit of good luck I've ever had in one of these Carl versus Alex challenges. Here we go. So many apple. Uh, are these any better? Oh, this is better. Hmm. Alex might not find any fruit at all. And I found berries and now I found juicy apples that taste dreadful, but we won't talk about that. Back on the beach, Alex was struggling. Nothing. Zilch. We had a phone call. Hello. Hey, Alex. Um, have you have you caught any uh, ed uh edible fish? Uh, yeah. I'm I'm just off Brighton in a boat, and I've had one bass. Yeah, I've had I've had a bass though. Yeah, but was your bass um? Was your bass uh, legal limit, like 42 centimetres? Oh yeah, well over 42, yeah. Do you know where any mushrooms are? In the woods, 
No, come on, Alex. I need help. I've, I've, I've never foraged for mushrooms in my life. Better learn. Bye. I don't know how I feel about that phone call. I just lied, like straight up, completely lied. Thought it could have been a little bit more supportive than that. I guess foraging is a bit like fishing. You can go a long, long time, you know, not finding anything. And then all of a sudden it comes good. So I've just got to stick at it, I think. Well, I'm going to change lure. I'm going to put on this, this beauty. Ah, whose idea was it to pick nettles? Ow. I don't know how I'm going to make it not sting the chef's mouth. On the topic of mushrooms, um, I haven't found anything. Right, so things, as you can tell, aren't going perfectly to plan for me. I haven't got my bass or any other fish. And I haven't got, in fact, I've got nothing. Could have had some kale, but it would have been probably poisoned by the nuclear power station right next to it. Later on, I've got some foraging plans. And in terms of the protein, I've got a little trick up my sleeve. For now though, I thought whilst we're at the sea, there's one ingredient which is uh, probably the most important of them all, and that is salt. Now I've never done this before, I've just watched some videos on how to do it, and uh, it involves boiling seawater and extracting the salt as the water evaporates. So let's give it a go. Is this a dandelion? Quest for salt begins. That is a dandelion. Can you eat dandelions? Hmm. Yep, confirmed. We can eat them. More leaves. Right, we've got to get some clean water. Oh, no, it's getting deeper. There we go, there we go, there we go. So I've got a stove. I've got my salt water. I'm getting a bit worried about the mushrooms. I feel like I need some help from someone who actually knows what they're doing. Well, my first ever mushroom find is hugely disappointing. It looked like it was half dead. You guys watching this video, if you recreate what we're doing, don't take risks with mushrooms. Because whilst you can eat all of these mushrooms that you find, some of them you can only eat once. Because after you've eaten the mushroom, you're dead. All right? I've done a few miles now. This was a frustrating stage in the challenge for both of us. However, Alex's water level was dropping and I was back on the road, heading towards some lakes that I could fish. Excuse me, you haven't seen any mushrooms, have you? Mushrooms? Mushrooms, no. Mushrooms. no. Still no mushrooms? No. Why has no one seen mushrooms? It's almost like mushrooms don't exist. Oh, excuse me, sir, have you seen any, mush seen any mushrooms? No, never mind. Ah, ah, I just burnt myself. Ah, no, it's spitting. There we have it. That is our salt for our meal. Brick farm trout legs. Right, here goes. Time to be sneaky. We're going fly fishing. I'm definitely not at the fishmongers. Hiya. Um, bit of a strange question, but um, I'm having a competition with my brother, a cooking competition. We were meant to catch the fish ourselves, so I'm kind of cheating, but I need it to be realistic. Yeah? Yeah. Okay. Okay, so it, I can pretend that I caught them from close into their shore. Okay. 435, Yeah, that's fine. Um, can I no, you can't. I hope Carl doesn't find out. That can go in there, and we zip it up, and that's going to stay cool until I cook it up. You know when you do something a bit naughty at school, you get that weird like feeling inside, you're like, damn it, I shouldn't have done that. Anyway, forget about that, we've got to find some mushrooms. I bought myself Kit Kat, but I'm only gonna let myself eat it once I've caught a trout. I'm gonna forage some blackberries to 
some apples. We're gonna make apple and blackberry crumble, just without the crumble bit. It would just be apple and blackberries. The next part of my day takes me to where I used to live, actually. All I've got is a box. Ooh, rack of lamb would be quite nice, actually. Sorry, I didn't mean to say that around you. Feels good to be out here again, picking blackberries. This one's for you, Mum, my blackberry picker companion. Since day one, Chef Daniel is going to, uh, he's gonna fall in love with my, my dessert dish. I'm sure of it. Time for a tactic change, I think. Whatever I'm doing isn't working. That is not focusing. Come on. My camera just doesn't know how to do this. Oh, there we go. F Never mind. Not a nicer cast. Just got to the spot and I've just seen someone with a basket. They look like other foragers. Found an apple, by the way. Unfortunately, it was in my lunchbox. I mean, that one looks poisonous. Am I seeing things? What? This is like a mushroom city. That is actually nuts. There's hundreds. I don't know what they are, but that is really cool. Mushrooms are just like the coolest things apart from fish. At this stage, and in my opinion, fish were in no way cool. In fact, they were immensely frustrating, as no matter where I cast and what fly I used, I just couldn't catch one. In fact, I think I spent more time tangled than I actually did fishing. Alex, on the other hand, seemed to be enjoying himself. It is such a fun thing to do though, wandering in the woods, looking for edible mushrooms. Don't know what that is. It genuinely looks like it could be a death cat. It's just scary, isn't it, that if you ate that, you would die. Yeah, so you gotta be incredibly careful. Guys, I've just spotted something through the bracken. No, what is it, what is it? It looks, oh my goodness, no way, no way. It's hedgehog fungus. It is hedgehog fungus, which means we've got mushrooms for dinner. Instead of having gills, like your normal mushrooms that you get from the shop, they've got like little spines that come out. Carl has never done mushroom foraging before, so I don't know if he's gonna find anything. Few more. It took me so long to like even just get confident ideaing like simple mushrooms like those hedgehogs and look at these field mushrooms and maybe he's got some help from someone. I ain't telling him any of my tricks. I was just heading back to the car after collecting a few more mushrooms and I've stumbled across some wood sorrel and it reminded me I've got no green foods. Wow, it's really lemony. How about I make a beech leaf salad? <clears throat> Tastes like paper, just forget about it. Alex was on a roll, finding himself pine needles and heather, no doubt tea making material. I though was running out of time to catch a trout. It's been a good day, spent the whole day outdoors, enjoying very nice surroundings and uh, had a pretty decent afternoon foraging got myself some mushrooms yes 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 this actually happened i've fished for so long i don't even know what to do oh my goodness it's stripping line um right let's get this line out of the way Oh, my reel's just falling off. That's not supposed to happen. Oh, oh okay, I'm gonna land this without a reel then. We're gonna have supper in three, two, no oh, crumbs. We're gonna have dinner. Yes, we are. The hook is out. That is a beauty. Right, let's get the priest. Hang on a minute. 
put you this move in the No, no. Damn it. I've lost I've lost some mushrooms. I put my bag down and they just fell out. <laughs> Covered in mud now. That was it. I'd fished for hours and the one fish I'd caught escaped. Any other time I'd keep fishing and say something like, never give up. But this time I was tired and beaten. With the day coming to an end, we realized that without some sort of oil, cooking was gonna be very difficult. Together we agreed to allow one bonus ingredient each, which we could buy from the shop to make the final dish more acceptable for the professional chef. Well, this morning I managed to get two sea bream, definitely caught them, flaky sea salt. I then got a tub of blackberries, a tub of mushrooms, and then I got some wood sorrel, some heather, some pine needles to make a tea. So yeah, we got a fair amount of stuff actually. You know, it's not, not bad for a day's foraging. We both had a decent haul, but we're yet to choose our bonus ingredients. These we'd buy the following day before heading up to the restaurant. Well, here is my final ingredient selection. And just next to this pile of ingredients should have been a trout but there isn't and that doesn't feel good so tomorrow i'm gonna have to cheat i'm gonna go to tesco and whilst we get our bonus ingredients which we are permitted i'm also going to get the ingredient which i'm not permitted i was tempted by getting one of these but i feel like alex would probably realize something was up i have a fish so we have sorted out our bonus ingredients. Extra virgin olive oil. Why though? With the good stuff. Why? Because you need some sort of fat to cook in. Butter. Is that salted butter? Salted butter, which that's, means I don't have to... That's two ingredients. That's salt and no, butter. No, 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 there's one ingredient. It's, it's butter. Well, if I knew that was the case, I wouldn't have to spend my whole day See, boiling this water this has got oil. Beach. This has got oil and it's got olives, so... No, the oil comes from the olives. And that was it. The time had come to visit one of the most prestigious restaurants in the country. We'd be cooking for Daniel Clifford alongside his head chef, Mark. Welcome to Midsummer House, boys. Thank There's you. an apron for you. Thanks. There's an apron for you. Thank I'm very, very excited much. about this. I've watched all your programs. I'm very nervous <laughs> about this. What are you cooking? I'm going to attempt to cook a rainbow trout and leaves from the wild and what are we doing with them um I'm, it's a secret okay um, <laughs> right if you need a knife you need anything give us a shout i'm going to stand back and watch you both uh, crack on good luck yeah? thank you very thank much you. and that was when it dawned on us neither of us had any experience in a professional kitchen this was going to be interesting I don't know what to do with myself. Now this might look a little bit strange, but I'm taking my blackberries first because I need to get dessert sorted quick. Wow, look at them. Do you know we can't buy them this fresh? Really? Yeah. They're stunning. They're stunning, yeah. Absolutely, stunning. Absolutely beautiful. So you found these yourself, yeah? Oh uh, yeah. Oh, I've got some, uh, some salt. Oh, of course, we had to find every ingredient, and I know that salt is so important, right? Massively. So I, I spent, I think, four hours on the beach trying to uh, boil away salt, uh, water so I could... So you've made your own salt? Yes. Well, I've been a chef for 30 years, and I've never made my own salt, so that's... <laughs> if there is a... Tears off the sea. I'd be nervous. I am nervous. Uh, actually, I'd be asking for some brotherly love and see if I could have some of that. So far, all I've done is cut up some apples. Oh, yes. This is what I need. <laughs> this is what we need. This is what we need. A bit of power. My plan was to liquidise my foraged fruits and then freeze them into a sweet treat for Daniel's dessert. I don't know what Carl's up to. Oh, that does not look appetising. What are you doing? 
you have a freezer in this establishment? We're off to find the coldest freezer in the world. This is actually really hard to do. I haven't done much filleting, but it's not an easy trick to master. Should be quite happy with that. I think you should be very happy with that. I've seen chefs that can't fillet fish that well. Did you hear that? We've got it on film. Yes. Wow. Right. We just got to hope it freezes in the time we have. I think you'll be all right. What am I doing with this? Mate. Job that, oh no, that's dreadful. That's dreadful. I'll be honest with you. If that if that was my fish and someone else was doing that, there's a good chance I'd have probably had buttered you by now. Do you have a dog? Yeah, uh, yes, but he probably wouldn't accept that. Oh, <laughs> come on. Joking aside, I was struggling. Alex, however, had nearly finished removing the bones from his fillets. Sensing I was a little lost, Daniel showed me how to best enclose my trout in foil, ready for cooking. This is called cooking fish on, on papillots. Papillots. So basically you're cooking it in a bag. Sounds professional. Very professional. It looks, it's looking good so far. With the fish ready for the oven, I melted butter into my fruit sauce and then heated the pan, ready to cook the nettle, dandelion, burger, patty, Thing. This salt took me four hours to make. We now have uh, five minutes left. Jim? That is much. <laughs> I'm so bad under pressure. Yeah. How's it looking? It's looking brilliant. And there it is. My fish is fresh out of the oven. Right, so we now have two minutes left. Look at that way, so the skin stays crispy. Ah, my fingers! Ah, my eyes! And with no time to spare, I spilled way too much sauce on the fish and headed out to serve my main course. Wow, so what do we have here? Well, the uh, tea is a nettle and dandelion tea, and that is a wild, or oh, rod and line caught rainbow trout. And what's the sauce? The sauce, uh, the sauce is a blackberry and apple uh, locally sauce. Okay, lovely. Sauce, sauce. Oh. It felt so surreal to see my attempt at cooking on a plate in front of such an experienced and highly skilled chef. As Daniel began eating my meal, Alex was making the finishing touches to his sea bream and mushrooms. The fish is a little bit over. It could do with some salt. Oh, look. There's a pin bone. I think the tea is... I know he said it might just have a little bit of mint in it, but it's definitely got a lot more mint than anything else because the mint is really coming through. So mint and um, mint, trout, trout, apple and blackcurrant, it's a new combination to me. Now yeah, I've been cooking for a long time and I've never had this combination, but... It's not disgusting. Not disgusting is good, I thought. Andy kept on eating more. It must have been okay. I was feeling confident. It's lacking acidity. It's lacking seasoning. The fish is a little bit overcooked. The nettles, I think they've been overcooked. They're a little bit stewed, so. And then he went on for about 10 minutes, pointing out all of the faults in my dish. So I think we'll cut to Alex now. Okay, I'm done with that. Tea. Thank you. The tea was looking good. A pleasant pine and heather aroma was filling the kitchen. Oh, you know what? I think that's going to be good. Look, I get young chefs coming into this kitchen that, that uh, have, have cooked in other restaurants and they get nervous cooking here. So for them to come in straight off and go straight into a professional kitchen where they don't know where anything is, I think they've done a good job. There we go. Lovely. Sea bream. Finishing touch. This is very uh, Scandinavian to finish it at the table. Really? 
Yeah, this is what well, I, I show you. Best chef in the world. Oh. They do. Yeah, that's why I'm, that's why I'm doing it. Okay, thank you very much. Enjoy. The quality of the mushrooms is probably better than we can actually buy at the restaurant. So they're beautiful. What's lovely about this is the skin is really, really crispy. And you can see that he's taken the scales off. It's a little bit dry as a dish itself. It needs a sauce, but the salt, that was definitely worth the effort. I don't want to tell them this, but I think it's all down to dessert. After what felt like a marathon couple of days, we were now in the final stage of our challenge. Right, okay, right, so let's, let's go, boys. You've got 25 minutes starting now. Thank Good you. Luck. He said he liked the salt, so I'm gonna put some salt in it. Now, what I did earlier was put my berries into the freezer, so I, I'm hoping by the time we have to serve, that will be, yeah, a nice lolly. Then, with these, I'm gonna bake them into crisps. This is quite good. The edges are crisping up slightly. He's turning normally a 12 hour process, into a 22 minutes. minute process. So who got you both into fishing, your parents? No, Carl got into it. Um, he literally just decided that he wanted to give it a go because I'm a younger brother. You know, you see your older brother doing something yeah. and you're like, I want to be like him. And then I gave it a go and it turned out I was better than him. So, <laughs> you know, fine. Good one, good one. <laughs> <laughs> oh. Oh no, the, oh no, oh that's bad. Oh, Josh, we need to get them out. Things are getting real bad in here. They were on that. What is he doing? Absolute disaster. For Alex, dessert wasn't so complicated, but would the unusual combination of fruit and salt even taste good? Ready for your dessert? Yeah. Here I have freshly foraged blackberries. You know, as blackberries go, they're, they're nice. I'm not sure if he's sprinkled a tiny bit of salt on them. I think he has. They're delicious. I know you're quite shy about it, but you do have, there is a little, there's something that's going on upstairs that actually understands food really well. No, but I, I mean, like but some people, they don't understand the concept of it, but you understand the concept of it. You it actually understand. tastes good, doesn't it? Like, why, well, it I don't just, know why it would. Salt changes everything. Yeah. Cool, thank you. This is the moment of truth. My ice lolly. Look at that. It's frozen. I'd worked hard on my second dish, picking the crispiest apple slices to sit next to the wild fruit lolly. This is your uh, berry and apple. This is more in the taking of a two-star restaurant. Uh, multiple servings. Thank you. Enjoy. The presentation around the side could have been cleaned up and, and you know, the crisps, some of them are crispy, some of them aren't. Love the presentation. Very two Michelin starred um, effort there. Would I pay for this? No, is the answer. If they came around my house and cooked this for my dinner, would I be happy? No is the answer. But to come into my kitchen and to produce two dishes off the bat in a very small time scale with ingredients they found themselves, I think they've done an amazing job. I think there is a clear winner, but I'm gonna reveal that later. Judging was about to commence to decide which of us would take home the Catch, Forage and Cook winning plate. Okay. Scoring? Yeah. Out of 10. 10 is you'd serve it in your restaurant. Yep. It's like the best food in the world. Yeah. And one is you could eat it, but only just. It was time to start on my main course for flavor. Let's give that a six. Out of 10? Yeah, I would say so, yeah. Wow. Presentation, yeah, I'd give that a six. Uh, for Alex's main course, the salt made such a difference. Do you know, I've cooked for nearly 35 years now, and uh, I've never seen someone make their own salt. And the difference, the impact on flavor alone, I have to give him an eight. An eight? Yes. Oh, yes. Oh dear. So creativity, 
one had the concept of a trout comes from the river so it was surrounded by nettles and dandelions and they're the things that would grow around and that as a chef with creativity that's the the, the route that i would think i'm gonna give you a seven cool thank you very much that's very kind and alex's the mushrooms were the best mushrooms i've ever seen really beautiful obviously the salt made a difference so i'm gonna give him a seven as well the main course scores brought the subtotals up to 19 for me and 21 for Alex. I'm going to start with Alex. He's taken a massive risk. He learned from the main course and he seasoned them slightly with a salt and it really did encourage them flavours to come out. I'm going to give him an eight. What? Where, where are we? Yes. Here we are. We're here. Knew that salt. Salt with salt. blackberries. Who, who would have right. guessed it? It's yeah, not exactly. Right. Presentation. He chose a really nice porcelain bowl, but I can't really give him the. Uh, it, was your, it was your bowl. Well, he was using it as a hat earlier, so with all due respect. <laughs> so it's a one. I don't know. It's a no, one. no, we're not. Yeah. One's pushing it. Let's not pull my pants oh. down. I'm being on. Stop talking. Yes. Let him speak. Presentation, I'm going to give him a five. Right. right. So now we're going to go to your. Uh, yeah, what did I even make? I can't remember. Uh, I can, I can really it definitely wasn't it was it was frozen it was frozen I wouldn't have said it was a nice lolly I would have said it was more of a frozen uh, texture I think uh, it was uh, it was tasty I'm going to be generous and I'm going to give you a six but I'm gonna push you up here because your presentation You've obviously been hanging around in, in Michelin starred restaurants quite a long time and yeah. you can see that your dual presentation really made a difference. It made this stand out. So I'm going to give you a seven. Okay, now we're at creativity. How can you judge creativity? I was told by a Michelin inspector many years ago when I sat down with him and I asked him what the best dessert he ever had was. And he said to me, it was a sliced, perfectly ripe mango. Nothing else. Nothing else. And I sat back, and as a chef that's cooked for a long period of time, that really confused me because I thought to myself, he, the chef actually hasn't done anything to that. So when it comes to creativity, it's creativity and belief. So for you, Carl, yeah, creativity because of the frozen lolly and the jewel pot, I'm going to give you an eight. Oh wow! But for creativity. <laughs> someone who can sit back and look so calm and collected in the kitchen and just put some salt and some black on I'm going to give him a 10. A top score of 10 meant that overall Alex had taken the win. I'd achieved 40 points, but he'd managed 44. I'm incredibly surprised and happy about my win. <laughs> yeah, you better be. However, I have one confession to make. I went to the fishmongers. I'd thought something was up since I was sure he'd said he'd caught a sea bass when he called me during the challenge. I thought it was just me that had cheated. That is I honestly believe. Well, the, the I'm sorry, but I was supposed to be the winner. Yeah, 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 yeah. I feel like I've been robbed. And then the guilt got the most of me too, and I kind of had to come clean. I did catch a beautiful rainbow trout, uh, and then I had an accident, and, and it... Um, <laughs> It slipped from my grasp and swam away. So my trout also was what? from the fish monk. Are you serious? <laughs> what? I so, think, well, I'm, I'm, sorry, I'm sorry to do this, but the outcome needs to go back to you. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> come on! So basically what it means you both can't catch a fish. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Whilst we'd both been humiliated about our poor fishing skills, it had been an incredible challenge. And from now on, neither of us will take the food we eat for granted.